Operating Systems. Chapter 4 Continuous Allocation in Main Memory As we may already guess, the historical evolution of memory management represents a process of increasing complexity to achieve higher performances. This process starts with the batch systems, with what we call the single process management. In this case, we rather not talk about operating system itself, but about the system monitor, and a transient area in which the different processes, one by one, can be allocated to be executed. However, we cannot forget that the monitor used the first addresses of the main memory. As in any further situation, we have to control the processes to avoid accesses to forbidden addresses, those of the operating system in this case, more in the future. How is the protection implemented in this scheme? It's easy. If we have a base register storing the first valid address in the main memory and given that there is no negative logical address, the operating system address space is secured. We must implement additionally a limit register with the size of the process so it cannot reach further addresses. Finally, we just need to check whether any address requested is within these bounds. What if we have several processes simultaneously allocated in the main memory? Well, we can start talking about an operating system and mutual processing. We will find many solutions. Being the first and most simple one, the fixed partitions solution. In this scenario, the main memory is divided in different areas or partitions that cannot change. If a process arrives to the system, it will be allocated in a free partition, if there's any, otherwise it will have to wait. The way a process can be assigned to a free partition will follow some strategy among several of them, first fit, next fit, best fit, or even worst fit. What? Yes, also worst fit. Now, we need to forbid processes to access not only to the operating system address space, but as well to that of other processes. Again, we'll use base and limit registers for each process. This implementation, sadly, generates the so-called internal fragmentation. Three bytes inside a used partition that cannot be used until the process is removed. This is a waste of memory. That's why some people propose the dynamic partitions. In this case, a partition is generated when needed and with the exact size of the process asking for it. Our memory will be a field of partitions and hollows the security is managed as in previous schemes. The only problem is that when different processes have been executed and removed from the system, we may find a memory full of small partitions that doesn't allow new processes to be loaded. This is the external fragmentation. We have thus to implement two additional operations to properly manage the memory. If there are two adjacent empty partitions, they can be condensated to generate a big hollow. If there are lots of tiny hollows among processes, the processes can be gathered together. This is called compaction. The limitations of these management strategies will yield to non-contiguous allocation mechanisms as paging, segmentation and combinations of them, but those will be discussed in another occasion.